Hey guys, OneClue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. In today's video, did I brought my Note QX Plus with me and we want to dive into the latest update for it. So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again on GitHub as we usually do this with the BitX and the BitX firmware updates that I'm representing to you and showing what is new with it. I wanna dive into the version 1.0.26 for the NerdQX or NerdX plus variants. These updates are for the for the NerdX, for the NerdQX, for the NerdQX plus and for the NerdQX plus plus X as well as for the Oct8, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have any devices of the oct with me, so I can test this out. And I wasn't really diving that deep into the firmware because I was just looking at specific things for the Note QX Plus because I do have one and I own one. And by the way, if you guys want to use or get one of these Note QX devices, make sure to check out the links in the video description down below. You can get them on different shops not that many are producing them but they are getting more and more popular so more and more people are actually getting a couple of these devices and they're pretty cool the reason why i want to talk with you today about the version 1.0.26 is pretty basic and it is a nice and refreshing new update for example there's now the support for the nerd x gamma which has been lately introduced by bitmaker over in spain which is awesome there's also a new ui change which is based on the ngx admin and nebula framework so we will take a look in this or on this in just a second, as well as there are a couple of improvements when it comes to the web UI connectivity, stability, which is awesome. So we do see, and you do get this, there are similarities between the BitX firmware and the firmware that is running on the Node QX devices, but they are fundamentally different when it comes to the programming language because this software is designed on C++ and the software that is running on your BitX is designed on C. So this is a programming language difference there, but plenty of these features are likewise available. So for example, the Swarm functionality is also available on all these Node QX devices, as well as other things that are on the BitX are also available on this one. So this is really, really nice and refreshing and it is awesome to see. We also do have a new global stat screen from Bitmaker Hub here. And another new thing is the danger zone, which is a button that is giving you some option to unsafely overclock your device. It is a discussion that you should have with yourself if you want to overclock the device or not. But if you do not have any experience in this, and if you're not sure if your power supply that you're using for your Note QX Plus or Plus Plus or whatever device you're using, you should not use this. So use this with a little bit of caution because if you do something wrong, you could either trip stuff on the board or damage other things. You don't want to do that. So just use it with a little bit of caution, but we will dive into all these things in just a second. There's also now a fix on the access point mode. Uh, there was some missing fonts and other stuff. This is all in there now. Swarm and color polishing is in there as well, or there is now a color polish for the swarm functionality. There is some DNS rework. So now you can actually go to something like HTTP columns slash slash net QX plus, and it should work. This is obviously depending on your local network. If your network is a little bit different or you have a router or some sort of network setup that does not allow anything like MDNS, then this is probably not available to you. Also, what is really great, the CSRF improvements are in there. So now it is no longer possible to do this. What was able on the BitX was also able to be done on all the NerdQX variants. And this has been fixed on this one as well. There's also a little bit of a change when it comes to the default values to something more reasonable. And in general, there's a little bit of memory improvements when it comes to the TLS buffer and PSRAM, BSS section and PSRAM and so on. So in general, this is a great update and I never really had the chance to actually dive into the NerdQX variants and the firmware. But with this video, I want to change this and actually also give you updates when it comes to the NerdQX Plus and all the other variants. It's I'll just call it the NerdQX so that you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not calling out all these different variants all the time. It's a little bit too much, but you do get the point. So now that I do have the time, I'm also 
trying to make videos about all the updates that we do see with this variant so that you guys are up to date on what's going on with it. So let's hop over to the web UI and let's take a look on this beauty. So the first thing that we actually do see is plenty of new colors, which is great. Uh, if you do take a look here down below to the bottom left, we do see this is powered by NGX Admin and Nebular, which is awesome. So he is also referring to the origins of the style, the design in general, which is awesome and really refreshing to see. If you do take a look, it looks kind of similar to what we do have on the BDX as well. We do see we have our hash rate, we have the expected hash rate. I just rebooted it a couple of seconds ago, so therefore it is just ramping up. And what's really interesting, this is one feature that is still missing on the BDX, but we will someday implement this as well, is that you do see these historical hash rate values, which was not able previously or is not able uh, on the BDX, but it is able to be done on the NerdQX. Um, this is really nice and refreshing to see that you can actually take a look on what the history is. And for example, you do see there on 6.50 p.m. there was an issue and on 6.54 p.m. I rebooted it. So there's like a missing gap of four minutes, which is okay. It's not that bad, but I just had an issue. I was trying to overclock a little bit. So you do see it is not a good idea to overclock if you're not knowing what you're doing and sometimes you need to far forward around. So well, while this is ramping up, we also do see all these regular stats, these gorges down here, they they look like the old version that we had in XOS, which is still nice and really refreshing to see. So they are in here as well. So this is really nice. We do have a button up here to the top right, which says default light. I'm not gonna use that and dark, which should be the default, which is really nice. Let's hop over to Swarm and let's take a look on what's happening here. So the functional, the functionality in general here is the same as what you do have on the BIDX. It will do a scan in your network and show you all the devices that you do have. It will give you the option to change stuff here. You do see this overlay and then you can change the host name, the primary stratum pool, the fallback stratum pool, and so on. So things are really nice in here. This is really, really great to see. Let's hop over to the settings button and let's see what we do get in here. So on the NerdQ X Plus variants, there is Wi-Fi and the pool connection still on the settings page. This will change on the BIDX in the next version, but that's something for another video. So we do see we get the host name here, which is for whatever reason set to BitX, I need to ch uh, change that. And then we have a connection to my Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi password, which is awesome. We can also set like the pool over here and do some sort of frequency change. We can also change the core voltage and we do have this drop down menu in here. If you're looking for home mining solutions or any educational content all around Bitcoin, look no further than Bitcoin Permanent your only choice of getting the newest and hottest tech worldwide. Check them out at bitcoinbrevent.com. If you're now someone who is really into overclocking and you do have a power supply which is capable and able of sustaining high amps over a long period of time, we do have this danger zone button here. And if you do click that, now your front end becomes something different. It is actually changing the input field to something with a drop down menu to something custom. So now I could, for example, put in something like 800, but it is red. If I put something in like 600, it is also red. Let's see, maybe this is the color scheme. Could be, if I do change it to 450, that's blue. All right, let's disable this one here. And let's see, the highest is 575. If I do put in 600, it should go into red because now we are actually in danger. We are overclocking out of the known parameters. But if I would apply something like 575, it should be this blue-ish, nothing is really changing here. So you do get the point. It is trying to visually warn you if you're trying to do something stupid, which is a good idea to be honest, because sometimes people just need a little bit of visual stuff in order to understand, well, this is not a great idea to do. But let's close the danger zone again. If we also do take a look here down there, we do have this flip screen, automatic screen shutdown and the automatic fan control. The This automatic screen shutdown is a really nice feature. I always have this enabled on my NerdQX Plus because it is just way better having it sitting around there. And 
knowing it is hashing silently in the background. What a drawback about this feature is, if you do have any issues, for example, your power supply is giving up, it's no longer doing its thing, and you do have a PSU error. It will show this on the screen, but if your screen is shut down and no longer displaying anything, you don't see that. So what I do is daily, I click the button for a couple of, uh, like I click the button once, check on the display if everything is all right. And if everything is all right, I just chill and relax and check in 24 hours again. So it needs some sort of over oversight here. Sometimes you need to look at your miners. It's just needed. So if you don't overclock, you should be fine. If your power supply is a good one, you should be fine. But if you used some Chinese knockoff thingies, it's good to check on your miners every 24 hours or so. Also, the functionality in general with the save and restart button here is also the same. We also do have the check on the GitHub release here. We do see the latest release is version 1.0.26 and the current version is 1.0.26. So we are on the latest one. What is really nice here is that the update is a little bit different. What you can do here is you can browse for the file and then you look for the file and afterwards you need to press on flash again. Otherwise it does not upload this file to your nerd QAX. It will just sit there and do nothing. So you do have like this two step of upgrading your device. It is kind of neat. I do like it. But this is nothing for the BitX. It's it's on this device and it is really handsome and lovely to have this on here. Now that we are done with the settings page, we can also take a look on the Influx DB, which is quite interesting to take a look at. What this is, is basically you can use your Nerd QX Plus or whatever Nerd QX you do have and implement it into a influx db if you're into this kind of techie stuff and you know what this is like it's a database running somewhere locally or somewhere online you can put in stuff in this database and use something like a dashboard in grafana to display your stats if you do have plenty of these devices and you don't want to check regularly on all of them then you can in theory, just create yourself a Grafana dashboard and have like 20 devices sitting somewhere in a corner. You never need to take a look on them because you do have one big dashboard where you can take a look on all the stats of all these devices. And if you guys are interested in something like that and uh, if you guys want to get to know how to set up your own InfluxDB and host your own Grafana, let me know that in the comments down below so that I do know you want to know more of this techie stuff and you want to get the dirty stuff out there and you want to learn some cool stuff. So then I know it and I'll make a video about it. All right. So this is InfluxDB and if you go over to settings, we do see the model number here. We do see the latest reason for reset, power and reset because I press the power button and we do see some other general stats. We also can take a look on the real-time logs, which is a little bit more than what you do get on the BitX because there are way more components on it and way more stuff to do there. So that is really nice. I do love this refreshing update on the NerdQ eggs variant and the dashboard in general. It looks nice. It still does have the flavor of the BitX where some of these parts originate from, but you clearly do see that Schiff's created his own version of ESP miner, which fits perfectly on the NerdQ eggs variant. And I'm I'm really I'm really stoked to see what he created there. So really a salute to Shifts over there or to Pmax, however you want to call him because yeah, he uses different names on GitHub and on Discord, but whatever. He created something beautiful and I just wanted to thank him over here and I'll make sure when the next update comes out that you guys know what's going on on the Nerd QX Reviance as well. So thank you guys for tuning in and for watching today's video. If you're interested in more content like this, make sure to leave me down a comment below and till then, see you next time.